this current series for me is the beginning of the rest of my life as an artist. These paintings I've loosely titled reliquaries as they utilize memories and dreams that collide uh, romanticism and classicism together but they respond and re revolve around my recollections of objects and toys I played with as a child, uh, primitive art form, pre-Columbian, uh, Mesoamerican, all, all forms of ethnographic material that my parents had collected uh, and that were in our home. His father Lowell was a painter and a collector and a dealer and he worked with uh, Mesoamerican materials and also African materials and these objects have come up in Michael's paintings over and over and over again. He's really going back to his childhood, back to those uh, objects that his father exposed him to, uh, that life that he uh, was, was raised in. There's also the use of the dream, which Michael dreams about these things. The function of dreaming uh, for an artist, and particularly for me, is a catharsis. It's a deeper view into the subconscious. I think we do plumb the soul as visual artists. And the way I've chosen to do that, and certainly, and certainly it can be clearly done with abstraction, but I, I've chosen to collide many different uh, opportunities, hence the notion of romanticism and classicism coexisting. And I don't really see them as battling entities, but I love the tension, the sense of ambiguity that these kinds of juxtapositions allow for the viewer and for me as a visual artist moving forward. You know, Michael in his subject matter is kind of rooted in symbolism. A lot of these pieces are gods and monsters and mythology, but yet much like the surrealist, he's breaking out into those jarring images of dreams. And you know, you think about Carl Jung and you think about how the surrealists kind of mined the dream world uh, to create images that were universal, that people could uh, connect to in very personal ways. That's exactly what's going on uh, with Michael's work. My paintings I don't really see as narrative sequences. I see them as an allegorical exchange, but with the idea of dangling the viewer in a sense of mystery. The idea that these ambiguities, the darkness into enlightenment, abstraction versus and colliding into figuration, and the mythic and the quotidian all provide opportunities for discovery where the true meaning of a painting has to be locked in what the viewer finds, not necessarily in a narrative sequence. The real mark of success for me is that if we find joy in a work of art, if we in ourselves as artists, we move our bodies, we discover newness. But I really feel that it's also what a viewer can find. So if we complete our discernment as visual artists, and have that transformative experiences that heal ourselves from our dreams. I believe in my heart that that experience can also provide a platform, a window, if you will, for other viewers, whether they be artists or not, collectors, uh, to find healing and to find new meaning in the paintings that uh, I, the artist, may not even have associated in my own catharsis, in my own willingness to play with those dreams and those imagined states. This is an extremely powerful exhibition and it's a way of, I think, for Michael to sort of reassess what he's done over a long period of time, but do it even more powerfully. His paint handling has become extremely sophisticated, but the general idea of what he's doing has stayed firm and true right up to the present.